and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to try to explain signals and slots and how they relate to the witty library. So let's get started. <coughs> a signal is basically a message that is defined in a class. It can be any kind of function. It's kind of the collect well you can say it's kind of like a prototype of a function. It has a parameter list, but it doesn't have a function body. And any class that is derived from QObject can use a you know can use a signal in the class definition. Um, in our example, I've used the Hello World application, and basically there's going to be three signal well, yeah, two signals that we're going to use: the click signal and the enter pressed. Uh, basically, a signal can be just about any kind of high-level event, I guess you could say, that you can think of. Uh, you can you can do a mouse click, a button press, uh, a, a you know a double click, mouse move like a hover, you know. And once that is emitted, you know, kind of like in other programming languages, once that event is fired off. You know, any functions that are connected to it, which are slots, get called. Um, so, so basically, you can, like I said, you can think of it as a function that doesn't have a body that is declared in a class definition file. Uh, it, you know, basically it enables you as the programmer to bind objects together. You know, and they don't have to know what the other object is doing. And we've, you know, we've done examples of signals and slots so far. I just want to, you know, kind of explain a little bit better the best way that I can. Uh, slots are identical to, you know, C++ member functions or functions, you know, just ordinary functions. You know, they can be overloaded. They can, you know, have, they can be public, private. They can be, you know, just like any... <coughs> Excuse me. You know, they can be just like any other kind of function. They can have a parameter type. They can have a return type. <coughs> the only thing is, when you create a, when you have signals, and you want to connect slots, those slots have to make. You have to make sure that the slots match up to the signal. So the parameter types have to be the same. The parameter lists have to be the same. You know, if those, if those two things are not the same then you cannot connect a slot or that function to that signal you know it just won't work um, when you pass arguments to a signal that gets emitted you know it's, it's basically like you're doing a function call so you know looking at our example we I've taken the hello world application and just added two more slots or functions to the to the uh, the header file, and I just differentiated them from saying greet one, greet two, and greet three. These are three slots that are going to be connected to these signals. So let's look at the, the slots definitions. You know, slot. You know, greet one, which is slot one, basically is saying hello world from greeting one and takes the value from our name edit. You know, greet two, hello there from greeting two. Greet three. Hello there from greeting three. So you can see the difference between the three. And as you can see, I created three buttons. And then our greeting is going to be displayed up under our buttons. And basically, you just take these, th as you can see, we have greeting one, greeting two, greeting three. You know, and there's four different ways. There's, there's more than just these four ways. Of actually doing taking the signals and connecting the slots so once this signal is called you know once you click on that button this function is going to get called once you click on button 2 this function is going to get called or a member function you know once you click once you press on the enter key and you're in your name edit text box you know the enter press signal is going to get emitted you know once that is emitted this is going to get called greet 3 
So let, let's look at and, and also this this one as well. Button three, the click event. Once you click on button three, this is going to get emitted. But let's look at the four different ways of how this is done. We have button one. You could say dot clicked dot connect. And the traditional way to do it in Witty, I call it the traditional way because I don't believe that every compiler can do uh, C++ lambdas yet. That's becoming more and more proper though. But to me, this is the standard way. You take the object that is going to call the function, you know, that's going to trigger this signal, and then this is the actual function. You, you take a, a reference, take the address of that function, or member function, or me member method, I should say, that's going to get called. Uh, another way of doing it is click.connect. And they have a slot macro. It isn't. This is not used all that often. I think they got rid of it. They didn't get rid of it, but they don't use it as much because of performance issues. It's much easier to just do it this way than to call it this way. But in my opinion, because you have your signal and your slot, the slot macro, just in my opinion, makes it easier to for you, the programmer, to see what is actually going on. You have your click signal, which has a mouse event as a parameter, and then this is the actual slot or function that's going to get called. Again, it, it takes the this object, you know, the object that's going to call that function or slot, and then here's the actual slot itself or function. And this time, you don't have to pass the reference operator. So that's the second way of how to of how to do a signal a signal in a slot. You know, third you have the enter press signal. So when you press the enter key in your name text, you know, witty line edit, you know, that signal is going to get emitted and then that function, this function is going to get called. And in this case you can use boost bind. Boost bind can take a, a function, it can take a functor, it can, t you know, it can take a, you know, member functions if you want to pass in member functions as we have done here. So it can take a slew of different parameters. And in this case, it's kind of the opposite of this first one. And then it takes the address of the member function, greet three, and then the actual object that it is connected to that's actually making that call. And then the fourth way, which I think is probably, which is probably going to become the more popular way, much more compilers support it, is to use a C++ Lambda. And basically, you have your Lambda. You can actually see the actual event that's being called, the witty mouse event. And then basically, we can just say what it is we want to happen. So instead of us doing, you know, like read one, two, and three, as we did here, we can just do it all inline. So then we don't even have to define it in the header file. We can just do it all in the, in the source file. And basically it's doing the same thing, saying when you click on button three, hello there from greeting four. And that's, you know, that's basically it. You know, that's just four different ways of how to use signals and slots. Remember, signals have are like a function. They, did, they get declared in a class, and I'll, I'll show another example. You know, it's not a perfect example, but I'll show you kind of what's going on behind the scenes. But they take a parameter, and that parameter gets passed. I guess the lambda is the best way to really look at it. There's your parameter that gets passed from your signal. And it has, again, it has to, the, the slot has to match up to the signal, and then this is what gets called. And we're not even using this, but it's it's getting used by the Witty Library. If we wanted to use it, use this, we could. So that's that's basically what's going on behind the scenes. Another thing you need to know is that in order for signals and slots to work, if you look at the fact that we're using boost bind, the signals and slots implementation is derived from boost signals and slots implementation. So that is why, that's another reason why you need Boost to actually use, in order to be able to use the signals and slots in this library. All right, see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.